May the Fourth be with you. Today we're taking a look at Star Wars Tales of the Jedi, numbers one through five. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to Comic Gun TV, where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. All right, guys. As I said, today is May the Fourth, or May the Fourth be with you. And today we're taking a look at Star Wars Tales of the Jedi, numbers one through five. Uh, my original plan was to dedicate one video to each individual issue. Uh, however, I realized <clears throat> I have not read these in quite a while. Um, so my, my memory is a little foggy on them. Uh, I did go back and kind of read the summary of the first one on, uh, the, on Wikipedia, which is the Star Wars wiki. Um, so we're just going to go over, uh, flip through the books and, uh, go from there. So first we have Star Wars Tales of the Jedi, number one of five. And this is the Ulic Queldroma and the Beast Wars of Onderon, Onderon, part one. As you can see here, got a nice little image um, all the Star Wars books <clears throat> are pretty much the same style of artwork. Uh, I, I don't know if I really care for the artwork or not. Um, uh, when we get inside, you'll see what I mean. Uh, with that being said, also, something I don't really care for with the Star Wars, uh, comics is the paragraphs of dialogue. Um, it, it's really hard to keep up with the story and everything when there's just so much dialogue. Uh, you know, I do like a fair amount of dialogue, but there comes a time when it's almost too much. Like the old school X-Men books. Uh, just constantly describing something so let's go here and as you can see this was from dark horse comics uh 250 in the u.s 315 in canada back in the day this came out in october on october 1st 1993 uh tom vate did the script Chris Gosette pencils, Mike Barriero inks, Willie Scubert letters, Pamela Rambo colors, Dave Dorman cover illustration, Dan Thorsland edits, Scott Tice logo and book design. Excuse me guys, pardon my voice, I think I might be coming down with cold or something. Been having kind of a scratchy throat here lately, the other day it was kind of sore. And I have been coughing a lot too, so... Bear with me, guys. It completely skipped my mind that today was May the 4th, obviously. Uh, because I'm kind of pull, putting this together at the last minute. I've been so busy with work, working on the other videos and everything. Didn't really uh, cross my mind that May the 4th was coming up. So, anyway... Ula Quadroma and the Beast Wars of Onderon. Millennia ago, the discovery of hyperspace travel brought the galaxy together, giving birth to a democratic union of star systems known as the Galactic Republic. From the time of its inception, the Republic grew over thousands of years to encompass vast numbers of inhabited worlds. The survival of the Republic depended on two factors, the wise governing of the selfless administrators and lawmakers, and the preservation of harmony and justice by a heroic warrior fraternity, the Jedi Knights. In those glorious ancient days, a great many Force-sensitive individuals willingly entered arduous training under accomplished Jedi Masters, taking up the weapons and knowledge of, and the powers of the Jedi Way. Join us now as we explore the secret histories recorded in the Jedi Holocron, tales of an age when the Jedi Knights were numerous and strong. Uh, this, of course, is part of the Legends line, as it came out before Disney acquired Star Wars. 
but here's the artwork it very simplistic especially with the facial features uh, I don't really care for it all that much I mean it it looks okay uh, very futuristic looking, but it's also very dark. Um, some scenes look a little bit better than others. Uh, especially biomechanical stuff here. They really do a great job with detail there. And with monsters and aliens and stuff like that. Um... But overall, I'm not really a fan of the muted tones and the more or less simplistic design of the humanoids. It just doesn't feel st Star Warsy to me. Uh, and then you have the. Uh, large amount of dialogue not only the dialogue between the characters but also these descriptive bubbles as well it kind of has it's somewhat difficult to follow when there's so much dialogue going on between characters it if I wanted to read the book I would read the book you know but I don't I want to read the comic it seems like they're trying to take everything from the book and put it into the comic and comics and books don't really work that way you know I'm not saying simplify it or dumb it down for people but you don't really have to describe everything that's going on when obviously there's images to go along with it I don't know I got these in a lot of comics that I bought from a, a former co-worker of mine um, that he he sold me his entire collection for dirt cheap, and these were included in it. Uh, ordinarily, if I would have seen these, you know, just sitting on the shelf or whatever, I don't know. I probably wouldn't have bought them. But since they were included in the lot, I went ahead and got it. Uh, I figured, why not? You know. So here's the second one. And this one, uh, before I go into that, let's do the first one. Uh, the first one, it tells the story of a Je Jedi Master Arca, Arca Jeth, uh, who tells the story of the history of Onderon. Uh He has three, uh, three apprentices. Ulic Quildroma, his brother Kay, and Tot Donita. Uh, Ulic is... To many, he's very full of himself. Uh, very overconfident. So, Arca tells him the story to kind of humble him, more or less. And, uh, in issue two, again, same people. 4,000 years before the time of Luke Skywalker, the Jedi Knights were the most powerful and respected force in the galaxy. In those days, a Jedi Master named Arca of Arcania sent three of his apprentices on a mission of peace and justice. The three young Jedi are Ulic Quadroma, his brother Kay. Quildroma, and the Twi'lek Tot Donita. Aboard their ship, the Nebulon Ranger, they crossed the vastness of hyperspace to an 
untamed world called Andron. As the three Jedi Knights meet the Queen Ammonia, meet with Queen Ammonia, ruler of Isis, the Beast Lords stage an unexpected attack on the Royal Citadel, and the Queen's daughter Goliath is kidnapped. Overriding the misgivings of his companions, Ulic Quildroma decides to pursue the abductors as the Nebulon Ranger takes to the skies over Onderon, wild for over Onderon's wild force, a seeker torpedo fired from the ground finds its target. And again we continue with very muted tones, uh, very simplistic uh, designs for the uh, humanoids. It very much, the muted tones reminds me of being in Jabba's palace. Uh, <clears throat> it's just, I don't know, I'm not really a fan. I, I do like the designs they did for the armor, but, and stuff like that. As well as the biomechanical stuff. But when it comes to humanoids and the very simplistic designs. And again, the muted tones. I just I don't care for it at all. It really kind of takes me out of... Takes me out of the story. Uh, here they find the remains of Freedon Nad. Uh, Freedon Nad was su seduced by the dark side four centuries ago. He apprenticed himself to a dark lord of the Sith. In the tradition of the Sith, there can be only one dark lord at a time. Unable to become a Sith lord as long as his master lived, Nad came to Onderon to make himself a king. After his death, his tomb became a focus of dark side energy. And so his power passed from generation to generation. For more on uh, Star Wars and stuff, you guys, uh, if you haven't already, uh, check out Star Wars Theory. Uh, very good channel. I enjoy it. It teaches me a lot that I didn't know about Star Wars. Uh, that was the conclusion, or that was the entire... Uh, Ula Quadroma and the Beast Wars of Onderon story arc. Then we get into the saga of Nomi Sunrider Part 1. Uh, and I believe this is actually a three-part story. And they're all interweaved. They're all interconnected. Which we'll later find out, uh, I believe, during the Sith Wars storyline. The saga, of <clears throat> and it looks like pretty much the same people worked on this book as well. The saga of Nomi Sunrider, the time of Ula Quadroma, is remembered as an important turning point in the history of the Old Republic. It was a time when the dark side of the Force rose up with unexpected fury against the galaxy and nearly drove the Jedi Knights to extinction. The names of the Jedi Knights who stood fast in those days still ring down through the ages. Their histories and legends are recorded in luminous detail in the crystalline recesses of the Jedi Holocron. Another Jedi warrior whose skill in the art of Jedi battle meditation will never be forgotten is Nomi Sunrider. Journey with us now as the Jedi Holocron reveals the unusual path Nomi Sunrider followed to mastery of the Jedi way. And uh, like I said, the reason why I'm not telling you in depth of how the story goes and everything is because it's been so long since I've read these and I really didn't feel like rereading them again. As you can see, there is a lot, a lot of reading you've got to do. And when I read a comic, I want to be able to sit back, relax, and enjoy it. Not have every single thing described to me. Because obviously... I can see what's going on. And again, the very simplistic 
colors, muted or simplistic design, muted colors. Very, I don't know. I just, I don't care for it, guys. Um, if you guys want to know what the stories are about, uh, go to Wikipedia. Uh, bring up Tales of the Jedi, and you'll go down to these these five stories or five comics take place. The first thing you'll come to is the Tales of the Jedi, the Golden Age of the Sith. That is a technically a six issue story war arc. It starts out with issue zero and ends with six issue five. Uh, then the Fall of the Sith Empire, which is another five issue story arc, uh, but it starts with one and ends with five. And then after that, you'll get to uh, the Tales of the Jedi, Ula Quadrama, and the Beast Wars of Onderon, which is a two-part story, which are these two right here. And then you'll get to the three-part story of the Saga of Nomi Sunrider. Uh, these came out, uh, the part three of five came out December 1st, 93. 4 of 5 came out January 1st, 94. And 5 of 5 came out February 1st of 94. And you can just go through, get the summaries there. Uh, eventually, eventually, I do plan on telling the stories on Come Again. Probably during the winter or something, when I've got more time. But for right now, we're just going to go over the artwork um, and stuff like that. So bear with me, guys. And I'm not sure, at this time, um, during the early 90s, I'm not sure if it's changed at all since then, but Dark Horse really had a thing with muting the colors, muting the tones of the artwork, and simplifying the designs on uh, Humanoid, while really popping out when it comes to Biomech and technology, stuff like that. So there's the opening crawl. I'll let you guys read that. And again, the same style of artwork. I don't know. I just... I mean, I can admire the artists. They do a good job. I just... I'm more or less like the Dan Jurgens, Jim Lee style of artwork. Uh, also, you know, um, Todd McFarlane. Stuff like that. Really strong detail. Bright, vibrant colors. They can get gritty as well. Again, keeping with the same tone. And I believe every issue of Tales of the Jedi is the same style. Same muted colors. <clears throat> the same simplistic design with the... Uh, Biomech and stuff like that really popping, but humanoids being very eh. So there you guys have it. The first five issues, Tales of the Jedi, uh, it, it, this was just Tales of, uh, titled Tales of the Jedi. Okay. Uh, so if you're looking for, you know, subtitle, whatever, uh, the covers don't have that on these five. Uh, however, on the others, they do. Uh, again, this was, these were just titled on the cover as Tales of the Jedi. Now, when you get into uh, stories such as the... Uh, 
Freed on Ned Uprising. It's actually subtitled. As well as Dark Lords of the Sith. And the Sith War. But if you're looking for these, just look under the title Tales of the Jedi. Um, chances are you will find it under that. Uh, but like I said, the first two, this one and this one, are the Ulic Quadroma and the Beast Wars of Onderon saga. And then the last three, one, two, three, are the Saga of Nomi Sunrider. So, if you're into the uh, Dark Horse Star Wars comics, by all means, go out and pick these up if you haven't already. Uh, they are kind of cool uh, once you get into the story. But, like I said, I can't really remember what happened in them. It's been so long since I've read them, a few years now. And because there was so much dialogue, uh, I didn't really absorb it all. So... Like, I can tell you what happened with uh, Green Lantern comics and Superman, stuff like that. But stuff that just overwhelms you with dialogue, I can't remember what happens. So, anyway, I'm Shannon for Come Again TV, where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Take care, my friends, and may the 4th be with you.